morning. Hello, YouTubers. I just watched a video by Amy Jo. She's a wood carver. She does a lot of power work. And she was talking about wood density, hardness in wood. She said, I wish there was a website. Well, there is a formula. I looked it up, and it's... Bruh. I've got a real simple one that works for me. Pick up a piece of wood that you may want to carve. Take a fingernail and feel. And you can feel your finger wood. This is basswood, very popular for carving. It's out of a dead tree. That's why it has the fin it. This here is basswood. That's actually a piece that was given to me a long time ago that came from a factory that sells windwood, basswood. And I, you can't see it, but your fingernail will actually, you'll feel it go into the wood. That is basswood, very popular wood to carve. It's, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, this is just me. This is not anybody else hardness I would give this a three three and a half out of ten whereas what's a wood we all know cherry black cherry there's one that's popular with woodworkers I would give that a eight or a nine of course red oak or maple being in the ten category and there's woods I don't know about because this is another important factor when it comes to carving picking out woods trees lumber your geographical location. Uh, here in Vermont, basswood grows easily. Tulip, popular, popular trees, which is very closely related to aspen. They're, they're one's an offshoot off the other. The hardness is probably uh, three, three and a half, four, maybe five. No, not a five. About a little harder than basswood, I'm going to guess. Um, it's not a terribly marketable log in this region because we have so many other choices to make. Uh, one, put my glasses on, is cedar. White cedar is so different. Oh, there you go. Can you see that? When I talk about using this is probably a one and a half because balsa wood. Balsa, not balsam. Balsam is an evergreen tree. Balsa wood is something out of Africa that's extremely soft. And you can see this white cedar. My fingernail is just marking that right up. I don't know, I'm hoping the camera's picking that up. Maybe I need to come up a little bit. That's where the finger, that is very soft. Ooh, he, very carbable. But the problem with it is, see I've put the knife in. Now we don't do this. See how easy that breaks? That's prone to getting band-aids put on, cuts and getting band-aids put on when you're carving with a knife. I don't know how it would work power carving. I think it would be the same thing, very soft. You can carve with it. Red cedar, I've got a piece of that somewhere right here. We call it juniper here in the northeast. We don't have a lot of red cedar. Red cedar is different. Let me get a little bark off of that. You know, you can mark that. That's probably a three or four. I would think it would be very nice to carve with. The branches work well for what I've done with it. Um, dead trees need to be looked at. This is Hoyt Birch. I don't have a live piece here in the house. Very carvable, but it's dead. And half rotten. Um, another one that's interesting is Hoyt Pine. Do I have a piece of Hoyt Pine handy besides this branch? No, I do not. I don't carve with Hoyt Pine a lot because I'm overrun with basswood and butternut. For the people doing wood spirits, um, white pine branches, they dry. This is one that I've just started carving, playing around a little bit with. When they dry, they get very hard, and they would be very 
I would think power carving would be very nice to that. I'm going to try it because I'm getting into power carving. Another great carving wood is butternut, eastern butternut. I don't know the ranges. You can see your fingernail mark in that one. That's probably two and a half, three, a little softer than basswood, but um, it's grain tends, you want to be careful carving with basswood, it, uh, it works well, it works well. Now, picking up branches for carving, great way to get material. Here's a white pine branch, I said I didn't have any in the house to do, that one's green, it blew down the storm, I cut a piece of it off, and it carves beautifully. Another little branch, makes mushrooms with it, little wood spears, little whatever. But branch is heartwood. Uh, let me see, let me see. Oh, here. Okay. That is the grain of the wood. If you look at a flat stump, the circles, that's the grain. Growth rings, they call it. This is the grain in the side. You can see the pattern in it. The grain. Basswood's not known for being a real colorful, pretty wood, but it carves nice. You want to stay away from heartwood if you're going to be offended by cracking. That's why I have this piece here. I started carving a mushroom with it, and then I put it aside, and it dried out. Well, this is, um, damn it, I just can't think of the word I want here. It'll come to me in a minute. It's a pest wood that just takes off and grows. It's got quite a pretty grain. It carves nice green. It does not carve well when it dries. You can carve it. To say you can't carve hard woods, spoon carvers do it all the time. They carve a lot of green wood. Some of them dry it. They do it all the time. You've got to have sharp equipment. You've got to pay attention. Be careful. Wear gloves. You know, here's a bear carved out of... Uh, that stuff. You get old, you do that. I know the name of it. it grows all over. Uh, sumac, which people uh, that eat weeds and that, they'll talk about sumac being good for you. you can see, that's got a crack in it. Those don't bother me in some projects, such as this. Doesn't bother me at all. Carving a mushroom, I think a crack, a small wood wizard, I think a crack in them. That one didn't happen to have any. That's carved out of basswood, chart, and that's all that is. It's just burnt with a torch. You know, that one doesn't have any. Doesn't bother me. But if I got this duck project here, which I haven't worked on in a while, and I've got it all carved, and I've done the detail work with the wood burner, I've actually started to paint a little on that, and all of a sudden that develops a huge crack across it. That's not funny. That's where you want to watch out and stay away from heartwood. But if a crack is it dries, it doesn't bother you. Don't worry about it. Pine is not terribly sent crack doesn't crack too bad. Butternut will. I can't tell you if basswood, I don't believe basswood will. I'm no expert on this. Trust me and, you know, when you leave your comments, just remember I'm not an expert. I'm only trying to help people. Um, sad part is for Amy, if she watches this, they push popple over a bank in Vermont just to get rid of it. Some of it's sod, a little bit sod and lumber. But aspen, cottonwood, cottonwood you can't give away. I get a lot of logs off uh, pine logs, hemlock, and spruce off tree surgeons, uh, landscapers, people doing tree removal. And if I said I'd take cottonwood, my yard would be so full it couldn't breathe. It it's grows easy here. There's a lot of it. Cottonwood, uh, aspen, popple, there's a lot of it around here. Uh, it's not a very popular tree. <laughs> A little fun on words there, popular, popular. No, it's not a highly desirable tree. Well, Amy, I hope that helped. I hope it helps other carvers. You know, here's a piece of American beech, very hard. See, I cannot mark that with my thumbnail. When we pick up a knife to carve it, it it'll carve. 
and you're going to earn it. When it's knife sharp, you want to pay attention. I hope that helps somebody. Thanks for watching.